अपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जे ह नजर समी पे रहो मारिए ह नजर समी पे रहो मारिए ह घनश्याम महाराज नी जे हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जे Supreme Almighty, our beloved Bhagwan Swami Narayan, the path maker to our liberation, our dear Puja Guruji, Puja Bhagatji, and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. You know, when, as a student in high school or even in middle school, when we hear the words "exam." test or quiz from the mouth of our teacher we become frightened our first reaction our first question in our mind when is it our second question i hope it's not hard our third question i hope to give extra credit all these different different questions start to arise and before it we even know it exam time is already here the last minute crams are the most difficult you pull all nighters to study in stress in anxiety knowing and not knowing what's going to come up on the test maybe your teacher might throw you a curveball and ask a couple new equations or a couple new questions that you might not even know the answer to you're worried that your grade is on the line what to do what to do what to do these are the questions that arise in our mind when we are taking examinations or are going to take examinations or tests or quizzes in our school but what about the test or quiz or the examination in our life how do we react to this because our whole life you can see it, see it as an exam bhagwan's exam and in the end of your life you get the result of pretty much if you got an a b a c a d or an f that all determines that result is determined throughout your life from year 1 to whatever or however much bhagwan keeps you on this earth your body and then whether you've done good bad those are the you can say questions or how you answered your questions the answers you're writing and then in the end bhagwan shows you that this is your result but more so that word can be taken into a deeper definition when it comes to the devotees of bhagwan swami narayan examination something that is beyond our imagination something that will probably never be ever executed in this age such kinds of examinations Bhagwan's greatness Bhagwan's supremacy can be determined and swayed by his by the charitras or the divine incidences of his devotees by looking at such divine stories of his devotees we can simply imagine not even his santos his householding devotees we can simply imagine that number 1 this is not a human that can be easily determined but beyond that even if this was a god if we can compare the previous avatars 
that have incarnated on earth before this age we can see that they have never developed any kind of devotees followers such as Bhagwan Swami Nare. and that's the unique part of his whole life Maharaj tested his santos and bhaktos so much gave him the most difficult of examinations that it's not comprehend it, we cannot comprehend this in our mind yet we want to take a small glimpse in the life of two bhaktos and see how they were examined see how they were tested and see what the result came out to be through this we can learn number one Bhagwan, even if he gives us the most utmost difficult of a test it won't be as difficult as the one that I'm going to tell you or share with you today and number two even if Bhagwan is testing you we can determine our own understanding how bad how much desire how much want how bad do you want to attain Bhagwan? this can be de determined here through this charitra but before that I'd like to set up the background by reading a small paragraph of the Vachnamrut where Bhagwan himself narrates these devotees these Haribhaktos and through them we'd be able to see Swami Narayan Hare in the Vachnamrut Loya third the question is asked thereupon Bhagwan and Swami and Shivan and Swami asked Sriji Maharaj what are the characteristics of a person who has faith in God and, and his son coupled with the knowledge of their glory? We've read this Vachnamrit before, but the devotees that are listed here by Sriji Maharaj, we want to take a little deeper look inside their life. Then Maharaj answered. Sriji Maharaj replied, What would a person who has faith in God and his son coupled with the knowledge of their gr glory not do for the sake of God and his son for them he would renounce his family renounce any fear of public ridicule renounce a kingdom renounce pleasures renounce wealth renounce his wife and in the case of a woman she would renounce her husband then Sriji Maharaj narrated the stories of the following devotees and Maharaj list many many devotees and inside this list inside this holy Vachnamrut which is authentic which is beyond all other scriptures such as the Vedas and Upanishads etc so on and so forth which has the nectar of all the scriptures and all the philosophies and principles in the world Maharaj himself names two particular devotees which stood out in his eyes that possessed this very quality and that is Krishnaji and Mulji. They're from the village of Mankua. Now, I want to share with you this prasang of these two devotees. And throughout the various story, you'll be able to pick up and learn that how they lived their life. And while the story is being read, I would like you to think in your mind that was I ever tested in this way? Or, even if not so this way, do I still have or do I possess a, this strong of a desire to attain Bhagwan, to please Bhagwan, to get the Rajipo of Bhagwan? This is what we want to look at. So, we're going to read the Charitra, and as we go, we'll do a brief explanation. Swami Narayan Hare Sri Hari made his way to Mankua from Buj. There, Two best friends, Mulji and Krishnaji, had taken a liking for Sri Hari's charming murti. They would follow Sri Hari simply to gaze at his murti. One afternoon, Sri Hari was si sitting on a cot and murmured, Does anyone want to become a sadhu? I'm looking for someone to initiate into the sadhu fold. Maharaj is asking, Does anyone want to become a sadhu? All the people in the assembly started to flee because at that time in the time of Bhagwan Swaminarayan everyone knew 
everyone knew how Bhagwan tested his santos. And the reason for that was that Bhagwan was not a ruler, he was not a king. But the reason for the test, the reason was for two reasons. Number one is to show the devotees of the future that how should my sadhu, how should my disciple, my follower be. And number two, the test was there done to keep santos in niyam dharam, to keep them in such a niyam dharam that they would be able to worship God in any kind of circumstance. This was the second reason. So Maharaj asked, does anyone want to become a sadhu? All the devotees sitting in the front line started to flee. But Krishnaji and Mulji jumped at this opportunity. They asked Sri Hari to initiate them into the sadhu fold. Sri Hari warned them that this is not an easy task, you know. Are you sure you're ready to become a sa sadhu? Maybe you should think it over. Are you ready to tolerate mistreatment and oppression? In that time, in the time of Sriji Maharaj, since Maharaj was revolutionizing the whole, you can say, the whole subcontinent of Gujarat, due to his different, different unique movements, his different, different unique ideas and principles of destroying adharma, meaning unrighteousness, and installing dharma, meaning righteousness, throughout the lands, many, many opposers rise. Why? Because then they would have to be forced to stop whatever bad or illegal or unwanted activities in society. And they didn't want to do this. So opposers would arise. They would try to come and kill Maharaj. But Maharaj was Maharaj, obviously. And he would divert them. But his santos, they were scattered throughout the lands. And due to that, many, many people tortured and beat Maharaj, Maharaj's santos. Santos would cry. Santos would not do anything. They kept sadhuta. They kept saintliness. Yet we can think right now that in that time, if santos were beaten, physically beaten, even swore at, they did not do anything. Then right now, as a saint in the Bhagwan in Bhagwan Swaminarayan Sampraday, if some person, even if a devotee of Maharaj says something to us, something that is maybe uh, insulting, then what? compared to this situation. Even if we go back 200 years and look at this whole scenario in our mind, we would think that this is nothing compared to right now. It's nothing. Then it would become, instead of a cloud, it would become a small pebble in our mind and it would go away. We would not be faded. We would be able to worship Bhagwan. We would be able to keep his idol without any kind of disturbances coming inside. So, Maharaj said that you would have to tolerate all this. Now, Krishnaji and Mulji sat on the outskirts of the village for several days. They came to understand that the body and its relations are temporary. Now, for those who feel that these are my parents and these are my, this is my sister and this is my brother and this is my uncle and my father, Maharaj himself says in the Vajnarmuth, in, in Gadada 1st chapter 44, that the jeev, meaning the soul, has a misconception in that it does not believe itself to be the jivatma, distinct from the body. Instead, it believes itself to be the body. To illustrate how the body clings to the jivatma, consider a person who wears a dugli, meaning a vest. You can, if we think about it right now in this age, Let's say a shirt, okay? Suppose the body, or we are wearing a shirt. Bhagwan is giving an example. And a tailor, meaning a person who makes a shirt, sews, uh, sews a shirt, he has sewn the shirt and he has given it to you and you, you wear it. Maharaj is saying, after having it sewn by a tailor, that person then begins to believe the tailor is my father and the tailor is my wife. Is and the tailor's wife is my mother. Such a person would be considered a fool, right? Who
Who would believe that? In the same manner, the Jivatma is given a dugli, meaning a t-shirt, in the form of a body, which is born sometimes to a Brahman couple, sometimes to a low caste couple, or in any of the 8.4 million life forms. Therefore, a person who believes the body to be the true self and believes the parents of that body to be his own parents is called a fool and should be considered to be like an animal. These are Bhagwan's words. Moreover, out of those 8.4 million life forms previously undertaken, there is not a single mother, sister, daughter, or wife who observes the vow of fertility any longer. So how can one who believes such relations to be one's true relations ever overcome the feeling of I-ness and minus? Thus, without such understanding, to eradicate the attachment for one's birthplace and native land is difficult indeed. Maharaj explains through his words that, and gives an example, that how can one believe a tailor who has given and sewed a shirt to one to be one's own father? It's not possible. In the same way, this body is a shirt. After maybe 60, 70, 80 years, the shirt will be torn apart. And then we'll get a new shirt, if we're lucky. Or what will Maharaj do? We don't know. But it's very, very important to understand. So they were thinking this. In order to attain moksha, one needs to follow Bhagwan's agna. After a few days, both of them returned to Sri Hari and again expressed their desire to be initiated. Sri Hari again asked if they were ready. Krishnaji started to unite. Krishnaji started to untie the knot of his top, meaning his, his shirt. Mulji ripped open his garments and said, why waste, ta why waste time in untying something I will never, I am never going to wear again? Sri Hari smiled and said, I see that both of you have already become sadhus from the inside. I now order you to remain as householders. The friends were heartbroken. The villagers ridiculed them for being foolish and making a premature decision. Yet, Krishnaji and Mulji stood firm on their path. They would do whatever it took to become sadhus, meaning they had a goal. Each and every person should have a goal in their mind, whether small or short term or long term. But in the end, what do you want to do? Where do you want to go? What do you want to attain? If we have a goal right now, we'd be able to aim. But if there is no goal in life, then where will you go? What will you do? It's, there's, it, it's simply, there's no, you're not thinking about your future. It's simply just foolishness. So, Krishnaji and Muluji had goals to become a sadhu. So, for that time being, they would stay in Mangua and spend their days in Sri Hari's Dhyan and Bhakti. One year went by, and Krishnaji and Muluji had begged one year ago to Maharaj, and Maharaj had declined their offer, but they had stayed there and did Bhakti. However, their passion to renounce the world remained strong. Instead of returning home, the two went to Garda and lived in Lada Tucker's home. They worked for a short period, but could not convince themselves to live as householders. They just had a desire. Their body was in sansar, meaning in this world, but their mind was with Maharaj always. Due to that, they did not have any interest or liking for doing any kind of tasks. Only after a year, when Krishnaji and Mulji, Mulji's relatives wrote to Sri Hari, Sri Hari asking him where the two were, did Sri Hari realize that they, they did not return home? Meaning, they did not follow the command of Maharaj. Maharaj told them to return home and stay there as householders. 
instead of doing that they went to Lada Tucker's home worked a little bit and they did not go home so their family members inquired and Maharaj found out that they did not they had not came home for one whole year so Sri Hari immediately called both friends to Dada Kachar's residence and asked them why did they had not gone home they expressed their passion to become sadhus there was just one thing on their mind make us sadhus make us sadhus nothing else there was nothing there was no other goal there was no other target but this one sentence in their mind Sri Hari replied I need written permission from your families go home and, and get a signed note from them once they give their consent I will give you your diksha meaning initiation Maharaj was also tactical and Maharaj was very smart instead of a verbal okay because these two they would have they know Maharaj knew that these two would have even said okay we had verbal confirmation to become sadhus no Maharaj said get written consent have it signed and if they say yes then come to become sadhus and I will give you initiation with Sri Hari's blessings Krishnaji and Mulji departed for Mankua as expected their families rejected their appeal for consent their families refused to give them permission since they wanted the young men to assume householder lives to continue the family lineage meaning to develop offspring kids the two friends were devastated one fateful evening they decided to take matters into their own hands they defied their families requested to continue the family lineage by dismembering their organs now some of you might not understand but to make it simple all males have organs below their waist Krishnaji and Mulji knew that their wives wanted to make kids but they did not have any of these desires they wanted to become sadhus so what they did was they dismembered their organs meaning they detached their organ from their body I think I don't need to describe any more but most of you probably got this but in that time think about it this kind of a test Bhagwan is rejecting them rejecting them rejecting them they keep coming and coming and trying to convince Maharaj yet Maharaj keeps diverting so in that time they make such a decision of doing this now imagine number one the hospitals there no hospitals the health care what will happen what will happen to their bodies they can also die there is no doubt they could bleed to death but they didn't think at all about this because they didn't they only had one desire and that was to become Maharaja Sadhus though this action may be <clears throat> may be interrupted as impulsive and unwise Krishnaji and Mulji understood this as the only way to prove their futility to their families and secure their families permission to renounce the world meaning they knew that this was the only way their passion for renunciation was intense and unwavering you can tell right now now remember that word test examination that word if we imply it right now in our life can it be determined are we passing the test are we failing the test or can we even ask ourselves a question in our mind that have I even gone through such an examination has there been any kind of questions asked in my life that are even to this extent or even to this extreme from that we can tell that Bhagwan has kept us in such an easy easy circumstance such a very very easy life that all we have to do is just slowly but surely go to Bhagwan's Dham by worship worshiping him for the remaining of our life but this is what happened 
Sri Hari received news of this extreme move in Garuda. Maharaj found out what they had done. He immediately wrote a letter to the Satsang community in Man- Mankua and ordered them to avoid Krishnaji and Mulji. Meaning, Bhagwan is now even putting the test even and making the test even harder. What he did was he wrote a letter and told everyone in that village, do not even consult with them, do not talk with them, avoid them, ignore them. After making this move, ignore them. He explained that they have acted acted rationally without my agna. Do not care for their well-being. Do not look after them. Do not associate with them at all. This is my agna. Such an examination. The devotees shunned Krishnaji and Mulji. Adabai, a kshatriya in Mankua, read Sriyari's letter and thought to himself, I'm going to look after these two devotees. I will apologize to Sri Hari for this mistake when I go to Gadara. They, they have no one to look after them. As a satsangi, it is my responsibility to take care of them. So one devotee had daya, compassion upon them. So instead of ignoring them, he actually diverted Bhagwan's agna and decided to help them out. The satsang community spurred Adabai as well, meaning they also considered them with Krishnaji and Mulji. Once they recovered, Krishnaji, Mulji, and Adabai attempted to attend a satsang sabha, but were driven out of the assembly. Instead, they sat on the dirt road in the galleyway and to listen to the katha in kirtan from a distance. Imagine their cup. Cup means desire. Desire to please Maharaj. They went to listen to Katha. You don't have to pay anything to listen to Katha. It's for everyone. No one, it's not restricted to anyone. They went to listen in the back they sat where no one was disturbed. Yet, due to Maharaj's Agna, those devotees saw Krishnaji and Mulji and Adabai. So they kicked them out of the assembly. So instead of going home or going away to listen to Bhagwan's charitras, in the Vachnamrut, Maharaj says, What are the characteristics of a person who has affection for Maharaj? Meaning extreme affection. Well, one of the characteristics is, is that such a person cannot live without the Kathavarta, meaning the discourses of Bhagwan. This is one of the characteristics. They had such kind of love for Maharaj that they sat on the dirt galleyway there, outside of the assembly, you can say, area, to listen. The devotees even chased them away from the dirt road. Wow. The three bhaktas were treated worse than stray dogs. However, they maintained their composure and tolerated each insult without a word. This is sadhuta. This is saintliness. Marad said that you had become saints from the inside, but now I'm keeping you householders physically. Maharaj's words did not go wrong. Why? Because even if they were treated to the lowest, what did they do? They did not say anything. They kept their composure and they, t- they tolerated. Krishnaji and Mulji's favor to become sadhus grew with, even, or, w- with each passing day. One day, with agony, they donned orange garbs and sped to Gadara, meaning they wore these kinds of clothing and they went to Gadara without any kind of initiation or proper ritual. They just wore these clothes and went to see Maharaj. Sri Hari was visibly, up, visibly upset upon seeing them. He asked the Parsids to forcefully remove the two youths from the Sabha. Again, Maharaj saw them. And there, Maharaj knew each and every action, each and every moment of what they were going through. 
and what they had went through and what they had did yet at their at the, at the first darshan of maharaj maharaj said remove them krishna drew and mulji went to the banks of the gela river and sang bhajans as loudly as possible that night shri hari tossed and turned in his cot at the sound of the bhajans from the river banks yet the test was not complete he complained to the parshads that these two pests will not leave me alone tell them to stop singing so again he sent maharaj sent his parshads and he told them to stop the parshads rushed to the river and scolded the youths their eyes remained shut and their hearts fixed on shri hari's murti hearing of this hearing of their tolerance shri hari decided to stop testing krishna ji and mulji he said the sound of their bhajans and kirtans are pulling me towards them bring them to me and treat them with kindness they deserve to be treated as sadhus finally the exam was over maharaj the exam taker finally gave in because krishna ji and mulji were passing each and every mini exam each and every test each and every ans- question they answered right without any kind of mistakes due to that maharaj had to give in upon seeing krishna ji and mulji enter dada kachar's courtyard shri hari immediately stood up and performed dhanvats there is one prasang in the vachana but maharaj himself performs dhanvats it said to maharaj feels in gadada middle chapter 48th vachana but that whoever has memorized and has you know has repeated my murti in such a way vandu sajanand rasroop in that way premaran swami he wrote these uh, kirtans he said that i feel like doing dhanvats to such a person and that's one person in in this person maharaj himself actually did dhanvats to both krishna ji and mulji he then repeatedly embraced them meaning hugged them very much the sadhus and devotees watching this scene from a distance also had tears in their eyes these two young devotees passed the test of divya bhav despite all of the insults and hardships they suffered their conviction in shri hari was unflinching they bowed to Sh- krishna ji and mulji in their minds shri hari too shared their mahima with all the other devotees present finally shri hari initiated both of the young devotees into sadhu fold as sarvagnanan swami and ganshamanan swami both santos served maharaj one of them became the head of amdavad mandir and one of them went to junagadh to serve sadguru gunatitan swami this is the story of krishna ji and mulji and how they passed the test in bhagwan and how bhagwan became pleased my question to all of you is that is there any kind of test that we have to go through in such a hard fashion like this one no then our life is easy and bhagwan has made it easy all we have to do is worship bhagwan and follow his vratmans his vows and before we know it will be released from this body and in bhagwan's akshardham our puja guru ji also had the same determination to please bhagwan when he was young and dada guru commanded him to get permission from gansham maharaj in surat and in the same ma- fashion guru ji for one constant year performed 108 dhanvats and tapni mara for one year straight without missing one day and at the end gansham maharaj came out himself and gave permission to Ma- guru ji tapped him on the cheek and said go ahead you can become my sadhu meaning the great always have such desire to please maharaj nothing can stop them in this world nothing can stop them 
it's everything is beyond them because they have such cup desire to please Maharaj. Saying this, I pray to Maharaj that we, we, myself as well as yourself, develop such kind of desire to please Maharaj and to attain him as fast as possible. Saying this, my humble J. Swami Narayan. Shri Patim Shri Dharam Sarvade Vishwaram Bhakti Dhar Madhmajam Vasudeva Mare Madhavam Kesavam Kamdam Karanam Si Swami Narayanam Nilkantham Bhaje Shri Gansham Maharaj Nije वर्णिवेश रमणि अदर्शनम मंदहासरुचिरादनाम बुजम पूजितम सुरनरो तमेर मुदा धर्मनंदन महम विचिन्तय धर्मनंदन महम विचिन्तय श्रीगणश्याम महाराजनी जय सदगुरु ने स्क्रीन सम डिस्क्राइब उस Every Sunday, many many incident happen in the life of some devotees of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, and by these incidents, he provides us too much knowledge regarding Bhagwan Swami Narayan's divine and supermost power. Now today, as last in our last katha we listen. That Bhagwan Swami Narayan even took a sort of an animal to his Aksardham. Why? Because the sort of that bullock came in the use of pulling the cart of groceries for the Santo. Only by these much merits that soul can also be sent to in Aksardham. Now today, in 151 chapter of Bhakta Chintamani, Sadhguru Niskuranan Swami gives us knowledge regarding Bhagwan's divinity and his divine power. There was a village by the name of Uttarad in the region of Kanam. There was many many devotees lived and in that village. There was one female devotee whose name was Sakarbai. She was very much and very staunch devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. As she was very staunch devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, that's why at the time of her death, Bhagwan Swami Narayan desired to take her soul into his Aksardam. But for that, Bhagwan this time decided to do something different from the other incident and that's why before four days of the final day of Sakarbai Bhagwan Swami Narayan himself came there to Sakarbai's home divinely and Bhagwan informed Sakarbai that I will be I will come back after four days to take you into my Aksardam. Then Sakurbai said, Maharaj, that is my good fortune that you yourself come to me and even you inform me before four days. 
and after this incident sakurai decided not to do any activities related to this world and she sat for bhajan she the whole day she chanting swami narayan swami narayan and while contemplating upon the form of maharaj even she given up the eating any food or even drinking water why because she decided as after 4 days maharaj will come and i have no need to take this water or food because i do not have to live on this uh, on this earth more than 4 days that's why she even given up all given up to take food or water but what happened after 4 days as bhagwan swami narayan his divine words as he gave words to sakarbai that he will definitely become after 4 days and on the fourth day bhagwan came but not to sakarbai maharaj came in the same village but to the another devotee's home and that was also a female devotee by the name of kesarbai she was a nephew of the sakarbai and she was also devotee of bhagwan swami narayan that's why maharaj first came there now as maharaj was there at the home of kesarbai then kesarbai welcomed him sat him on a good Uh, set him on a good seat and even after that he uh after that kesarbai made many many things to offer bhagwan meaning many many food items and after making all these food items she offered them to maharaj and maharaj accepted all those sweets and the other tables and after eating even kesar bai gave maharaj a uh, mouth freshener and after that uh she did puja of maharaj and after performing this puja she requested and she prayed to maharaj maharaj it is my great fortune that you are here in my home in in your divine form but i have a question in my mind that why are you coming here right now is there any purpose i forget to ask you because if you have something from me then i can do it so please reveal me the reason for coming uh, for presenting over here then maharaj said no i have no any particular tasks to perform with you but i specially come here only to take a soul of your anti sakar bai to my aksardham and even more more than that maharaj informed her also that he was there before four days in a sakar bai's home in his divine form and even he informed her to after four day uh, after four days uh he'll come back to take her into aksardham then after informing kesar by all this incident bhagwan swami narayan asked her that now as you have too much affection with your auntie sakar bai and she had also too much affection for her as you are a nephew now i have a question if i take this case uh, sakarba into my aksardham so she will be, uh, she will not be here on this earth meaning she would be died so what will you feel in your heart is there any pain or you become very happy then kesarba explain to maharaj maharaj the person whose death is near and 
Bhagwan himself first inform her inform him and uh, even Maharaj himself come to take that soul into his Aksardam then that's the th there will be no any other person more fortunate than that person so it is very good I, I become very happy that Sakurabai will be in your Aksardam then Maharaj said it's okay then after that Maharaj said after getting answer from uh, such kind of positive answer from Kesarbai Maharaj decided uh, to change his own decision to take Sakurabai into his Aksardam and after that Maharaj said to Kesarbai uh, I will not to I will not take uh, Sakurabai right now into my Aksardam but I will come back uh, again after many years but not now so you should go to your auntie's home there you should explain her that Maharaj came here and he gave me this kind of message for you that he will not come to take you into his Aksardam then Kesar by follow Maharaj uh, commands and Maharaj disappeared from that and Kesarbai went to Sakurabai's home there he explained everything what was happened in her home with Maharaj and even Kesarbai gave her the message of Maharaj that Maharaj will not be uh, will not come there to take her into his Aksardam so in this way after listening the message from Mahara, uh, message from Kesarbai of Maharaj, uh, Sakurbai, as she had no anything, uh, she has no um, any affection or any profitable thinkings for the from this world, and that's why she totally detached from all kinds of activities of this world. Now she had only one task and that is to worship and chanting Bhagwan's name nothing else now she started to take started to accept some food and water after this incident and that is on only because of Maharaj's command now this divinity the talks of this divinity spread in, into the whole village to the all the peoples and they all become surprised and even they all experience the this divinity and because of this divinity this divine experience those who are non-believers or those who are not devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan they become a devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan and those who are the devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan their faith in Bhagwan Swaminarayan's form become very solid the next incident described by Niskudan and Swami in the same chapter that was the incident here in this incident there was a deity but that deity was from a Muslim caste there was another village by the name of Kelod and there there were many Muslim families lived in the in the village so the Muslims they have their totally different religion and that's why they have uh, they never believe in any other religion besides their own but there was one genuine person in the village and there was also that was also a, that was also from a muslim caste his name was walibai and his last name was sheikh so sheikh walibai he was very genuine person and he was also very much intellectual why because as he observed the behavior of the priest of his caste meaning his religion the priest 
and saints of the Muslims. He also observed the behavior and codes and conducts followed by some Hindu priests. And finally, he made some santos of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And because of the company of Bhagwan Swami Narayan Santo, Sheikh Walibai, he was informed by the Santo that how Bhagwan Swami Narayan present on this earth forever and uh, everything about codes and conducts prescribed by Maharaj for the Santos as well as for the devotees and to all the systems of our Sampraday. And Sheikh Walibai became very impressed by this inf information of our Sampraday from the Santo. After getting this true knowledge regarding Bhagwan, Sheikh Walibai, as he was a Muslim and because, because of his Muslim religion, one who never believed in Bhagwan, meaning one who never believed that Bhagwan came on this earth. The same Sheikh Walibai, he became a staunch follower of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And he, only because of Santo's company, he cultivated and developed from faith in his mind and in his heart that Bhagwan Swaminarayan is only the Supreme God. And after deciding this, he always started to chant and singing Bhagwan's Kirtan, chant Bhagwan's holy name, and even doing puja. Now, after seeing these unbelievable changes in Sheikh Walibai's life, all the other villagers, his, even his family members, all they have the natural problems. Why? Because Muslims have a natural, uh, some kind of animity towards Hindus. And that's why all the villagers of Walibai uh, and relatives of Walibai, they all first tried to convince Walibai that our religion is totally different from these Hindus and we should not accept the other religion. We are Muslims. But Walibai did not accept anybody's advice or suggestions. And finally, the leaders of the caste, the leaders of the Muslim religion, they gathered the call a meeting and in the meeting they decided to declare Walibai as out, outcast from their community. But Walibai, he didn't have anything with their relatives or the, the other caste members or all the other villagers. Why? Because he had from faith in Bhagwan Swami and his farm and as he had many times many times experienced divinity in his heart and that's why he firmly believed that Bhagwan Swaminarayan is a true God and he is only Bhagwan and that's why he had no stress no tension no depression nothing even when the Muslim leaders they declare him as out, outcast from his uh, from their community still he had no any kind of problem or nothing and after even becoming out, outcast from the community he even doing bhajan and smore more and more now after many years passed and according to Bhagwan's niyam to take his duty into his aksardam at the time of his death so Maharaj along with many many santos and devotees from Aksardam, he himself came here in a village. But as the village was very small and that's why Maharaj first uh, and on the other hand Maharaj and Santo and many devotees came there by the divine and uh, by the divine planes, divine chariots, divine bullock carts, even divine horses. 
and that's why all those divine planes and these bullock carts horses all were parked and landed on the outside of the village there were many farms and that's why mara decided to uh, land all these celestial vehicles in one of the farm so maharaj and santos and devotees divinely came there so there was a divine light spread in that area now because of this divine light and these divine persons came there uh, the security guard of the farm he came there and even he asked who are you and why are you landed all these uh, things here your horses and bullocks they finish and destroy my the my crops of the farm who will be responsible for this then maharaj explained him that you just don't worry about it because these all these horses and these bullocks and all these vehicles and even all these persons you can see all those were not of this world they were totally different they were they all are divine and so you should not be worried about these things explaining this to the security guard of the farm after that maharaj and santo and devotees they proceed towards the village in the village even maharaj and santo and devotees gave darshan to all of those villagers why because throughout the life wali bai had to suffer more from all the villagers and that's why bhagwan swami and decided to show this miracle to all those miracles and the evidence that bhagwan swami narayan is the true god on this earth that's why maharaj and santo and devotees they walked in the all the streets of the village and gave darshan to all the villagers and finally maharaj came to the home of this walibai and maharaj said walibai i know very well that you have so su- you have to suffer too much only to keep my box meaning to take my sides to follow my commands that's why i become very pleased upon you and now this is your final day and that's why i came here divinely with all these divine santos and devotees and now you are the member of my aksardham and by saying this maharaj even too the soul of walibai and sat into a divine plane and maharaj and santos and all the devotees with all of all of those divine vehicles divine celestial vehicles they flew into the sky and disappear and reach into the aksardham this is what the divine incident happened even to some muslim devotees not only this single de- uh, single incident happened to such kind of muslim devotees but at the time of bhagwan swami narayan many many muslims become a devotees of bhagwan swami narayan and at the end of their life bhagwan himself came there and even took all of those devotees into his aksardham this is what the divinity as well as one can say that bhagwan in the eyes of bhagwan in the heart of maharaj there will be no any kind of differentiation that this is a muslim this is a hindu or this is uh this is from a high class family or this is from a middle class or this is a poor devotee or this is a very wealthy devotees he had no any kind of differentiation or discrimination in his mind and in his heart one who pray one who offer his devotion one who worships him with pure heart and one who follows each and every commands of maharaj that was the great devotee in the heart of maharaj in this way nishkunan some describes this two incident and 
the another uh, two incidents also written in the same 151 chapter but we will continue it later ghanshyam maharaj ni jay sri patim sri dharam sarva deveshwaram bhakti dharmatmajam vasudevam hare madavam keshavam kamadam karanam swaminarayanam nilakantham bhaje sri ghanshyam maharaj ni jay